If you're just interested in the gameplay portion of this video, then skip to this part of the video. Real quick before I start, but when I installed Underworld Exporter a month ago, I followed an installation guide from another video, so I'll go ahead and link that in the description. This is just a more condensed version. To start off, you need three things. One, a copy of Ultima Underworld. For this video, I'll be using the GOG version. You likely already have that, so you'll need two files from Hank Morgan's GitHub page under Releases. There is a version 1.10 you could download, but it requires Unity 2020 in order to get it to work. And this version has some issues like broken saving of games and UI scaling breaking at any aspect ratio beyond 16 by 10. So for this video, we'll be sticking with version 1 or 9, which is playable from start to finish compared to version 1.10. Just thought I'd bring that up before continuing. The first file is Windows X64 version 109.zip, located under Tristero Underworld Exporter. The last file is musicpacks.zip, located under Narvi Night Eyes. Once you've got Ultima Underworld installed and you've downloaded those two zip files, you need to make three new folders in wherever you want. I'd put mine in the games folder under C drive. Name one folder Underworld Exporter. The other, UW1. And the last, UW Soundpack. You can name these folders however you want, but for UW1 and UW Soundpack, there's a reason why I labeled these folders exactly the way you see them right now, which I'll explain later in the video. And also, keep these folders as their own folders. From what I read, Underworld Exporter does not read multiple subfolders. Next thing to do is to extract these zip files. I use 7-zip and I've used it for as long as I can remember, but you can use whatever you want. Extract the Windows X64 version 109 zip file to your Underworld Exporter folder. Then extract the MusicPack zip file to UW SoundPack. After you've done that, go find the game.gog file from your original Ultima Underworld installation folder and extract that to your newly created UW1 folder. Then, copy your Under-ROM 1 folder from your original Ultima Underworld installation directory, and then paste it in your newly created UW1 folder. After you've done that, copy all the files in the UW folder of your newly created UW1 folder, and paste it in the newly created UW1 folder. Then, go to your Underworld Exporter folder and open config.ini. Mine looks like this because I'm using a program called Notepad++. But go ahead and scroll down to uw one underscore soundbank and change your path like this to wherever music you want. You can use PlayStation, Soundblaster 16, or MIDI. I'm using MIDI, but the PlayStation version actually sounds rather nice. And yeah, there was a PlayStation version of this game, but it's Japanese only. It hasn't been translated yet. Maybe one day. 
Lastly, if you name those folders UW1 and UW Sound Pack, you won't have to change the path in the config any file. That's how they're named in the first place. It'll save you a step. But if you name the folders differently, or if you have your games installed in a completely different directory, you have to change the path for UW1 and for your music pack. You're pretty much ready to go now, but let's briefly look over the config any file. You can change your mouse sensitivity if you want to, and I recommend doing so because I felt like the default of 15 is a little too high, but your mileage may vary. Then I look over the special key binding, so you can fly up and down with R and V respectively, and if you want to go into attack mode quickly in the game, you can press F5 as a hotkey. E toggles the mouse look, and F toggles full screen, and you can cast a spell quickly using Q. You can also change the default light level, 8 is the default, and your field of view. And scrolling down a little bit further, you can turn on cheats if you want to. So if you want infinite mana, or god mode, change those to 1. For gameplay, if you want to go back to vanilla controls, just change context UI enable to 0. Auto key use lets you automatically open a door if you have the key in your inventory, so if you want to revert back to vanilla, just change that to zero. And the last section creates object reports for the developer. But that's it. Just double click underworldexplorer.exe and maybe make a shortcut of it. Choose your resolution and go explore the Stygian Abyss. Before I dive into this, I want to mention one glaring issue you're going to run into once you get your game all set up and running. When you create your character and you play for a while, you save your game, quit and come back later, and you click on Journey Onward, you'll notice this blue text here. I'll load my first save, because when you do, you'll notice that it's still there, and it'll remain there for the rest of your playthrough. And it says, File not found, file DESC and save for folder of UW1. Check your pass in config.ini and ensure game file has been extracted to see readme.txt. So when you get this, you didn't do anything wrong. It's trying to read a file that's just not there in the folder. So what you want to do is save in the rest of your slots. Two and three and four. And four is probably enough because that's, that's where it was trying to read. But just in case, I went ahead and saved in the other slots. Once you've done that, put out of the game. Go back in for everything to load click that skip all that click on journey onward and you'll see it's gone I'm gonna load this just in case yep completely gone just want to bring that up before diving further into this gameplay uh, overview Last, you are asleep. For three nights, each attempt to rest has brought you starting from your bed in fright, with no memory of what horrified you so. With a sickening sense of deja vu, you begin to dream. Treachery and doom! My brother would unleash a great evil. Britannia is in peril! Sure that the ghost can take you to Britannia, you allow yourself to be drawn to him. A visitor, and from far away indeed. Were he not dead, I'd suspect my brother sent thee. No matter, thou shalt serve to draw the hounds from the scent. Below, a creature heads toward the dark woods, a thrashing sack slung over its massive shoulder. What hast thou done with our Lord's daughter, Ariel? Drop to below to an accomplice, I'll wager. Well, he'll nay escape us, and when we bring him back, he'll both hang. Several tense hours later, you are dragged before Baron Ulmric. Ignoring you, Ulmric questions his captain. What news, Corwin? Forgive us, my lord. The foul creature escaped. A score of us gave chase, but it fled into the Stygian abyss with poor Ariel. We were attacked. Goblins and worse, my lord. Only three of us survived. I see. The Baron turns his hard grey eyes upon you. I 
was warned of thy coming. Last fortnight, an apparition of an old, haggard man appeared in my dreams. Guard thy daughter well, it warned, for an evil one shall come to steal her away. I posted guards at Ariel's door, but still you took her from me. They say thou didst drop her to a troll waiting below. What sayest thou? You explain that you are the Avatar, and that you are innocent. Whether thou speak truth or falsehood, I cannot say. Stories tell of the coming of the Avatar, but years have passed since he visited here. If thou art truly the Avatar, then perhaps thou canst offer hope. None here can survive this Tygene Abyss and rescue Ariel. My mind is set. Corwin shall take thee to the Abyss. Return here with my daughter, and thy innocence shall be proven. If thou dost not return, Avatar, then thy lies shall have brought thee low. This be the foul pit's only entrance. Once it is locked, none can pass. I will shut thee in and stand guard till I hear Ariel. Otherwise, twill remain shut forever. Hello everyone, and welcome to the gameplay portion of Autumn Underworld in the Unity version, version 109. Let's dive into this. So I'm doing something a little different. This is sort of a let's play while I talk about the Unity version. But I do have bullet points on my second monitor so I don't go off track. So hopefully this won't be too incoherent. So I'll start with that there's a stuck cursor on our main menu screen. That seems to be normal. I've seen this in other Ultimate Underworld Unity videos. I'm just going to point that out and ignore it. So let's create an avatar. You see it's here as well. And it also shows up in the dialogue screen with an NPC. I choose male, right-handed, and druid. And I'm going to point this out as well. The stats in the Unity version work a lot differently. We have Super Avatar stats. They can actually go a little bit higher. 28 Strength, 18 Dex, and 23 Intelligence, and 56 Vitality. Vitality in the original only goes up to 36. What the deuce, right? I wanted to point that out before continuing because stats work differently in the Unity. So let's choose Lore. The blonde guy's fine. Easy. Now I'll just use my YouTube name, I guess. Be this character, yes, and let's dive into the Stygian Abyss. So before I continue, there's three different musics you can use with the Unity version, which is rather nice, so I'm going to turn off the music here. And from here on out, you're going to hear the various different musics you can use in Unity, just for fun, because someone was interested in the in a musical theme of the video, so I feel like this is the best way. This is actually a retake, because I played this game while providing commentary with the in-game music on, not realizing that I can turn the music off. You can get PlayStation, Soundflash 16, and MIDI. So let's continue. You'll notice that everything's much, much more smoother thanks to the Unity engine. You can look up, down, left, right with mouse look, all around. It's really nice. You can toggle the mouse look with the E key. You can go into full screen with the F key. It looks like this. This is a nice option, though I prefer the uh, default UI. I might play this for a little bit just to show it off. I'm going to go back because I feel like the dragons are a part of the game, so I don't want to take them away. But let's grab this bag real quick, and I'll show you how that works. You just hold it, hold the right mouse, mouse, right mouse button, put it in your inventory. You still interact with objects with the left mouse button versus the right mouse button, the original. I'm going to pick the skull. I'm going to do this because I like the way... You can throw stuff in the air. Watch this. I like how smooth that is. That is, You like that? It's sacrilege of me to throw a skull like that, but whatever. Let's get out of here. And of course we can't. Though it says when well, you cannot pick that up, that's just kind of funny. Okay, that's because I had the pickup animation on. But anyways, let's look through this bag and equip this dagger, equip this torch, and equip this map. And you'll notice that now you can... Move items in your inventory wherever you want. So if you want to organize your inventory, you can do so. In the original, it worked a little differently. I'll have something playing um, next to this to show it off. Let's turn on this torch, and you'll see that now 
It has no lit animation. This version is a work in progress. So if it seems like I'm criticizing this entire version, I'm not. I know it's not finished. I know it takes a lot of work to put this in a state that even Daggerfall Unity was a few years ago. So it's just not me like trashing this version or anything like that. I just want to throw that out there before I continue. So let's continue. Let's go in here. I want to mention when I first played this, the default mouse sensitivity is at 15. That was way too sensitive for me. I put it down to eight and it's, it's much nicer as long as I don't wildly move the mouse. Let's pick this up. Now I'll use the torch, not torch, but candle as well to show that there's no lit animation there as well. Hold that, put this back. Keep this mushroom and get rid of these. And throw this mace away. And veterans will know why you will want to keep the mushroom. I may want to play all this all, this all the way through. You can finish this game from beginning to end if you want to. Just be aware that I've read of cases of the game people running to save corruption in the Unity version, so if you want to play this all the way through, back up your save folders in the UW1 folder. Let's go. Let's grab this bowl. Put this in here. And grab this torch. Okay, let's grab these runes because there's magic I want to show off. Magic in this, the magic system in this game, the timing is a little off, so I'll demonstrate that. Put all these runes in here. Put that there. Put that there. And in lore. And that also brings me to another point. Remember in the original that it was slow to transition to the stats and skills page? It's quicker in this one. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that for that and the rune bag. And now, instead of clicking on the runes to cast your spell, you can just click Q like this and keep an eye on the torch icon here. I'll turn this off. And I like how the door is open in this version. I like how smooth it is. Look at that. It's really nice. Let's uh, look at the mouse. Not mouse, but a rat. So the enemy AI in this version works a lot differently. I actually do this. When I open this door here, I think he... I think he goes in that direction. Right now he's kind of stuck. He usually hugs the wall. The enemy AI and NPC AI is different in this version version versus the original. You can see he's not acting the way he usually does. If you attack him or take his stuff though, it will attack you like a regular enemy from the original. When I come back, he'll probably be going to the next room, but you see now the torch, the lit torch is gone. I'll cast that again. The timing of the spells, of duration spells, is a lot different. I, I'm assuming because this is running at a higher frames, higher frames per second. Let's go in here and take this bedroll. Before I talk to him, I want to talk about the map. You can still write notes, but you can still move this quill around while, while writing, so it's a little, a little odd. On the right entrance here, you can see it gets cut off, but don't worry about that. If you want to play this from beginning to end, just know. Just exit out of the map, go back in, and it refreshes. And the levels don't go, there's eight levels in the abyss, but it doesn't go past nine like in the original. In the original, it can go higher, but for some reason, probably not in this one. Let's exit out of that and talk to Braggit. And the stuck cursor is back, which is pretty wonderful. Let's put this here. And it works the same. Press 1, 2, 3, or just choose dialog option. But here, remembering the original, you can click the left mouse button to continue, but that doesn't work here. Pressing spacebar works, though. And I can't transition to his next segment of, a, of his paragraph here. It only continues if I choose another dialog option. And it's like that for the rest of the conversation. Let's get out of here. I'm just going to click all this. I thank thee for that help. Goodbye. So mouse look is really nice, but I have read of cases of people wanting to go back to the original controls because the game is not built around mouse look. The game wasn't expecting you to always look up and down, and combat's a little weird because in mouse look, you can't 
Actually, I just showed off while I'm in combat. You'll see. Fight this rotworm here real quick. In mouse look, you can't control the direction of your swings. You can if you go back here, but I kept missing. It seems to be better if you just attack with mouse look on. It probably doesn't even matter in the long run. Put that away. Turn this on. You see the light spell is gone again. I'm going to go ahead and save. Just in case I die. And I will die. I'm not going to bother healing in this playthrough because the death screen is pretty buggy and I want to show it off. It's actually pretty creepy. You'll see when I... You'll see what I mean when I get there. Let's go in here so I can show off the swimming. And there's a vampiric bat here. I'm trying to be careful with him. So he can poison you. Okay, he's mellow. That's good. That, that's not the vampiric bat. There's a regular bat. So the swimming in the original, you remember the screen sort of goes up and down. Like you're actually swimming. But in this version, it's just flat. I actually kind of like it this way. It's less disorienting. And there he is. He's probably going to poison me. Watch. It's much quicker to swim, I like that. Let's kill this bat real quick. Hopefully he won't poison me. Oh, he poisoned me. That's fine. It'll go away. Maybe I'll find some leeches later on. Let's pick up our first pair of boots, finally. You think they give us a pair of boots before going into the abyss at least? Let's equip this helmet. So last time I was playing this, that helmet actually disappeared on me because I was sort of organizing stuff and moving moving items in my slots around like this. Let's see if I can replicate it. Not working. Oop. Oh, you see? Look. Look at that. Maybe an Ultima Underworld veteran can tell me that action can happen in the original. So I, I, otherwise I'm going to say that's a unity quirk. Let's move on. If it seems like I'm quiet for a little bit, it's because I'm looking at my nose to make sure I don't miss anything. Let's go de uh, demonstrate the jumping. The jumping in this game, in this version, is a lot easier. For some of you who may have seen the Ultima Underworld re uh, retros and I retrospective review, I had a whole segment in there where I found the jumping really tedious. Until someone told me about that you can jump pressing Shift J. Doesn't work in this version. Before I forget though, you no longer have to dig through a bag or backpack of keys open a door, you can just click on the door now. But if for some reason you want to go back to the original way, you can do so in the config any file, the auto key option. And you can go back to using the key, then using it on a door if you want to. I don't know why you want to, this is pretty nice. But if you wanted to keep it as original as possible, you can do that. Let's go in. I'm not going to use the silver tree, I'm just going to ignore it. Let's go over here and I can show off the jumping. Poison's gone finally. I'm not even gonna save because watch this. It's much, much easier. You can direct your jumps forward and backwards while in the air. It's actually really nice. Tapping spacebar slightly jumps. Holding it down lets you do a long high jump. We go over here to demonstrate this a little bit further. And this jump was really hard to make when back when I first started playing because when you jump like that, in the original it bounced you off into the water. There's no bouncing in this Unity version, which is rather nice. And the textures as well seem... they seem better. They look better. Probably due to the resolution bump. It would be nice to play this version when it's, when it's ironed out. I hope it gets ironed out. Hopefully, uh... Hank Morgan can get into a state that Daggerfall Unity was even a few years ago. Because we're not going to get an enhanced edition of Underworld 1 and 2. It would be nice if we did, but I'm not, not really counting on it. I'm going to jump over here just to demonstrate. You see, it's a lot easier. Jumping will no longer be a problem with mouse look. But. You don't need the Unity version to do mouse lick, I believe. I believe there's a mouse lick patch you can install on your DOSBox version, or use DOSBox staging on that version, or use Underworld Portable. It's not like you need this. I'm going to save here, though. I keep looking at my notes so I don't forget anything. I feel like it's easier for me to get all my points across while doing this gameplay overview. I think it's easier to see someone else play it. Let's open this door. And you see another quirk, when I switch over to the combat, 
It wasn't me priming that first swing. The game decided to do it for me. Let's fight this problem. I get hit by him a few times though, because I want to have low health for the next segment. Oh. But thanks to our Super Avatar stats, we're kind of strong. These stats are, this was actually pretty high when I tested this uh, a few days ago. It was like a 28, 29, 20, 58 vitality, I believe. Out of that. It would help if I put my weapon away. Let's go over here. I think I covered everything. But don't take any sort of criticism as me trashing this because I know it's a work in progress. There's a lot of work that goes into pouring this stuff over. I imagine. I'm not going to pretend to know what goes into it. It took a long time for Daggerfall Unity to get in the state as it is it's in today, and even just a few years ago. It would be nice when we see, well, I hope to see, different graphical options like a retro mode, higher resolution options, the potential for modding Ultimate Underworld 1 and 2 would be pretty great as well. I'm curious to see that in the future. And I forgot to mention that this is the version 109 version. I might die. He might kill me. If so, I'm gonna have to be quiet. Okay, I'm almost dead. I'm gonna go ahead and save. But the latest version is actually version 1.10, but that requires, that's the dev um, development snapshot version, and it's very unstable compared to this from what I read on Reddit. I'll link that in the description uh, just to uh, show that. Basically, you need Unity 2020 installed. You need to run it through that, I believe. I looked through it and um, I decided to just stick with the version 109 version. Because with this version, you can finish it from beginning to end. The version 1.10 1, 1 has problems with the uh, UI. You can't... Saving and loading is an issue. And in this version, I've read of cases of the conversation with NPCs, the game can crash. So you can finish this game from beginning to end, just... Be aware that you need to back up your save files in the UW1 folder if you do that. Another save. I think I covered everything I could, and I don't want this video to be too long, so it's probably going to be uh, 25 to 30 minutes of the gameplay portion. I'm just going to explore as much of the abyss as I can. The first level, at least. There's nothing in here. I'm going back up. Looking at my notes, make sure I got everything. I just feel like it's easier to get all my points across versus just doing a script and then putting the editing together. This won't be standard for future videos or anything like that. And also you notice when you walk over a platform that's over water, you can hear water splashing. And it happens when you jump too. That's another, another quirk of the Unity engine. But again, I don't mind the regular controls. They're, they're nice. Well, they're not nice, but they're fine. The game is built around the uh, default controls. Let's fight this slug. He might kill me. That's pretty terrifying, wasn't it? Let's go back. I'm glad I I'm glad that happened in this recording. But I'm gonna run away. Put this torch out and go to sleep. And we can talk to Garamon, or he can talk to us. There's no voice acting, so I'll, I'll just I'll do the voice acting. Us arrived. They have already, with haste and virtue, we can seek out and speak to the civilized inhabitants of the abyss. They and and thy decisions and actions will dot 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 and that was Garamon let's continue a little further and I'll play as much as I can for the next I believe 7 minutes like this why do I do that I can just press F5 but sometimes you see it primes a swing on its own when I switch to combat. Let me see if I can do that again. Hmm. 
maybe it happens when you're near an enemy. Maybe it's like an automatic feature. Let's open this door. And go in here. Is my character hungry? We're currently peckish. Okay. But it'll be nice once this version gets ironed out, for sure. Eat all this. Wow. Avatar is a bit of a pig. Um. Okay, let's go in here. I'll probably be done in just a minute. I'll fight this spider. I'm trying to remember if I... I'm trying to look at my notes to see if I forgot anything, but I think I'm done. I'm just going to explore as much of this as I can, but you can always skip... Uh, skip back or exit out if you want to, I guess. If I'm... Where I do that for? Come on. Grab that. Grab that. Here we go. Okay, guys. We explored... a eh, fair amount. I'll probably just go ahead and end it right here, because Unity seems to be giving me issues with a null reference exception. I was out of that? Yes, I can. Hello. Um, goodbye. There's some spider silk, okay. So that's it guys, that's Ultimate Underworld in the Unity engine. I think I covered everything, I'm just gonna look over my notes real quick. That's it, do I recommend it? Not, not really, it's not, it's unfinished. I'm not saying it's a bad version, it's a work in progress. I keep saying that because I don't want anyone thinking, thinking that. And that's a good time to stop right there. I'm gonna go in really quickly and say, do I recommend this? Um, I'm probably just gonna stick with the DOSBox version with the Roland MT32 emulator and maybe a mouse look patch, but the original controls are fine with me. I hope this video helped out somehow. So that's it. Thanks for watching and may the virtues be with you.